It's this thing on. Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I'm very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. So none of that, none of that, and none of that. Welcome to Sunday's edition of the DCEU Daily. You're back for more after I bored you yesterday. Thank you. Very well appreciated. So James Wan claims... He's got a secret project on the boil, but is it DC or DCEU related? That we don't know. I do have a suspicion. Hang on, hang on. I need to make, make a phone call. Hang on. Is that Chris Wong Svensson from Ping Pong Flex? Hello, Chris. Can I borrow your tin foil hat? Excuse me? I need a tin foil hat because I have a fear, basically. And that is, James Wan could be making a, a type of Superman movie. Now, when I say a type of Superman movie, a Superman movie that he could kind of make quicker than usual because he's got his fingers in a lot of pies, we know that. Um, I don't know. He's into the horror. Um, so maybe, and this is me just spitballing here, maybe a Phantom Zone kind of base Superman movie. Superman just trapped in a frightening phantom zone. Um, and the whole film is him kind of seeing the worst and best parts of himself. You know, it's kind of a really scary movie. And it could be an R-rated movie as well for New Line Cinema's kind of black label. Now, have I heard this rumour anywhere? No. But I was laying in bed this morning thinking about doing this video about James Wan's secret project. And, you know, we know that DC are kind of stepping into the elementals of horror, which I think is brilliant because you can do, look, you can do lots of different films. And there's no reason there are horror elements in DC, especially DC Vertigo, which is now merging with DC Comics. As we know, yes, despite what the media is saying, DC Vertigo is not going to die. It's merging with DC. So wind your necks in. But anyway, right. So imagine this. This is my theory, right? Imagine this. So you've got a Superman movie. Someone banishes Superman to the Phantom Zone. And the whole film is him having to survive in the Phantom Zone. In fact, that would be a fucking awesome TV series, wouldn't it? Imagine it. Superman trapped in, a, in the Phantom Zone. like A bit like Lost or something. That would be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? But anyway, we're talking about... We're trying to piece together what James Wan's secret project is. Um... Sadly, it probably isn't a DC, DC, EU movie. It's probably just some load of rubbish that he's going to make that hardly anyone's going to go and watch. But, and I love James Wan, he doesn't make a load of rubbish. Of course he doesn't, we know that. But I think, because so many people are clamouring for a Superman film, it's ridiculous. And, and you know what? I'm done with the Henry Cavill thing now. I just want to see a Superman film. I love Henry Superman, I do. But I'm quite happy to sacrifice that element of the fight just to see a good Superman film. And I believe James Wan doing a kind of like this Phantom Zone kind of um, movie with Superman in it, kind of a scary movie for the Black Label, could be a way of making a very quick movie that may be one hour, 50 minutes, two hours, um, but doesn't take a lot to make. You don't have to build, you know, the sets of the. Of, of, you don't have to kind of do too much with Metropolis or Smallville or other things. He's literally just in the Phantom Zone for nearly the whole movie. And that's something that I would like to see. If, you, if you're talking about making black label movies, about making out there movies, kind of bringing horror to the DC universe, I think that would be really, really exciting. So what do you think? What do you think James Wan's secret project is? That's my theory, and my theory, of course, is wishful thinking, because I'm obsessed with Superman, and I want him back on my screen in any way possible. And isn't it ridiculous we don't have a TV show with Superman in it, isn't it? I know Krypton is awesome, but come on, come on. We don't have a Batman TV show, we don't have a Superman TV show. This, these are times when these people can do anything on TV. It's pretty ridiculous. All right, let's talk about release the Snyder Cut. I want to make a point about the Snyder Cut and just say I believe it's 90% done. 
It wouldn't take much finance or effort for him to do it. So people keep on saying, yeah, well, he's doing that zombie flick, isn't he? Yes, and that is his focus, of course. Um, Netflix is paying him a lot of money to do that for them, and that's great. No one's asking him to pull away from that project. Nobody's asking him not to have a career. Zach is almost done. I think all you need is to put the music on that film and just tweak the VFX and a little bit more, little bit more editing. Something that wouldn't take much finance or much more time. So, and we all know that Zach, if he was told by Warner Brothers you can release this thing, would be running with no socks on, no shoes on, on broken glass to do those things, to bring, bring to his fans the Snyder Cut, right? We know that. And I just wish people would stop going on about $40 million to finish it and, and nonsense like that, because it really isn't true. It isn't. It isn't. I, I believe this film is almost completed. It's up to Warner Brothers, just like Zach said. It's almost done. It's up to Warner Brothers. He told you that, and you're all going around doing your videos going, mm, $40 million, yeah. John Aaron Garza. I like John Aaron Garza. He's a very thoughtful, intelligent young man at the end of the day, right? But, but we've got to be responsible with what we say. The man said the film's almost done. An almost done film doesn't cost $40 million. I'm sorry. So it's almost done. It's up to Warner Brothers. Now, a lot of people have been talking about Anne Sarnoff and what kind of effect will she have on the release of the Snyder Cat campaign. My opinion now is, and it was different before when I said it in other videos, but now it's she has no influence. And actually, I said this to you, didn't I? The other day, I said she may be in charge of the whole Kabang, but there are board, there is a board of directors, there are votes, and it has to be a unanimous decision. And Sarnoff is one voice. But Anne Sarnoff has been brought over to Warner Brothers to make their streaming service a massive success because of what she did with BritBox, with the BBC. That's the only reason she's with Warner Brothers. So I would really, really doubt it if she has much influence or say whether or not the Snyder Cut is released. Now, you may think that's crazy because she's going to be the CEO, and that's a big position. But as I say, it's still a democracy. There's still, board of, there's still a board of directors. And she may have a little influence, but ultimately, the fight is still real. It's still going to be a struggle to get this movie released. So the fight goes on. Again, what do you think? Comment down below. Please like, share and subscribe. And tell all your friends about me. I'm cool, right? I do okay videos, right? Considering I use a built-in laptop mic and a shitty built-in camera from my Lenovo laptop. The videos are not that bad, are they? We have fun, don't we? So tell the world!